The question that you need to be asking yourself with this game is can a single developer create a great game that despite not having too many features is fun to play and can result in many hours of enjoyment even in early access? The short answer is hell yes, assuming he knows what the subject he is portraying and clearly this is the case here. Hi guys and welcome to the Nebulous Fleet Command review and the reason why I wanted to kick this review differently is that this game deserves your attention from the first second of this video intro to the last end screen of this video and I will elaborate more on that in a second. I think even my naval action fans might get a kick out of it but more on that later. So if you like space tactical battles strap yourselves in cause you're in for a treat as this is most my in-depth review I have ever done and just to give this game the justice it deserves. Nebulous Fleet Command is a fleet command game where you can build, customize and fly your lovingly crafted fleet of space warships, pitting them against a fairly challenging AI or even other players on a fully three-dimensional battle space with guns blazing, missiles firing, rails gun punching through enemy hulls and damage crews rushing to save your critical modules all the while electronic warfare and enemy jamming makes your naval officers question their aim and yourself questioning your sanity in a glorious mosh pit that makes Battlestar Galactica look like a kid's cartoon. The guy developing this game is an actual naval officer with a clear passion and expertise in developing games, as releasing a game that works this well and is fun to play with such inch wide but mile deep mechanics kept me glued to my chair every second I played and is still giving me hard time as rather than making this review I want to go back and play it. But when someone makes this something this good people need to hear about it, so I guess I'm doing this after all. First, to address the elephant in the room, I have not gotten this game for free, I have paid it day one when it launched on Early Access and would gladly pay it again to support the devs, which have grown now to four people. I will break this review into the following chapters with the links in the description to the specific chapter so you can e more easily follow. First, the premise. So the premise of the game itself is, is surprisingly simple. Learn the ropes, build your own fleet, then duke it out with other players or AI in fully three-dimensional arena that looks and plays like something between a home world and an old game called Star Trek Fleet Command. Yes, it's a game from 1999 and yes, I still recall it, I'm that old. The fleet composition and the ships themselves offer an unprecedented amount of customizations, from the weapons, the sensors, the countermeasures up to interior modules leaving you with a smorgasbord of choices as to how do you want to assemble and fly your fleet. Bring a larger fleet of super fast missile frigates or a smaller fleet of capital ships with heavy beams and railguns or even a balanced fleet with some electronic warfare capability? This game has you covered. And once you learn how to balance it, you're in for a treat. I will go into more details later, but for now, let's talk about the battles. As mentioned, the battles take place on a one of total five maps of early access at the early access launch that are mostly balanced for four on and up to eight players. You can choose between one large asteroid, few smaller asteroid maps, up to a straight shooting gallery and between three game modes. First one being the Annihilation, which is a standard team deathmatch that we all know and love. The Control, which is like Battlefield-esque capture po the point system and wait till your tickets stick. Or the Station Capture, where one team gets to attack while other gets to defend a space station, which is a huge point of interest, of course. You can join on one of two teams or you can even join as a spectator to see some other players duke it out and learn from them. I found the latter to be a great solution for learning some tactics even if it was very high to find a multiplayer match that did not already have a spectator place filled. The pacing of the battles is perfect. The ships feel massive and are powered by real thrusters meaning it takes quite a while for the ship to turn around as it uses thrusters rather than magic. 
Especially the heavier ships like cruisers and battleship take quite a long time to change the orientation and heading, forcing you to think ahead so and this is something that I really enjoyed in naval action. Even more to the point, all bath all ships come into the map flying retrograde and burning full thrusters, meaning they have to decelerate before they actually, you know, stop on the battlefield. This is something of an expanse feeling that you get when playing this game and it's amazing. So, the game forces you to be three steps ahead of the uh, and anticipate where the enemy ships not only where they are coming from and more importantly where they will be in it's approximately 1 minute when you finally bring your guns to bear, which is something that is very similar to the naval action and this is why I said my naval action fans are going to like it because it has that tactical element of thinking ahead, carefully positioning and turning your guns to bear to be able to inflict maximum damage. That's just something really amazing and makes this game not only space but also naval. You really feel like a part of the big navy with big bulky ships. Also, having good intel is the key and this is where this game shines. You have direct control over which type of sensors you will put on your ships ves on your vessels, but you have to be careful as the sh about the ship's radar cross-section as well as its visibility. Ships using radars or transmitting coordinates to the fleet are much more visible to the enemy than the ships maintaining radio silence or just, you know, receiving the coordinates. That, of course, means that you could have a scout corvette trying to find enemy fleet with several missile frigates hidden behind an asteroid on radio silence waiting for a target coordinates before launching a devastating missile salvo. Missiles are powerful but scarce and expensive and if the enemy is packed with point defenses there is a good chance that you might not even score a hit. Grouping ships into formation, however, plays into the visibility of the ships, however, it also provides more security if these ships are packing some point defenses which can act as a screen for your more powerful hard hitters. As said, it's a matter of your enemy's fleet composition and tactics. Now let's talk a little bit about the ships. When it comes to the ships, there are total of six hulls to choose from and I'm deliberately not saying ships as within these hulls there is a huge amount of variations and customizations depending on how you see fit them out. The hulls are the Sprinter which is the Corvette, the fast and you know sheep for finding things and you know radioing back and maybe even some you know missiles. Then we come to the Reins which is the frigate which is like a smaller you know fighter ship but still pretty squishy. Then we have the Keystone, which is the destroyer, which is intended to actually hunt smaller ships, but it's also, with its spinal mounted weapons, you know, dangerous to the, to the capital ships. And then we come to the cruisers, the Vauxhall, light cruiser, the Axford, heavy cruiser, and the big boy, the Solomon battleship. So, right now there's only one faction, so each ship class has only one hull, which leaves a little bit, you know, to be desired, however, uh, the developers promise that there will be more factions in the game and the hulls are so well fleshed and thought through. Fitting ships with their weapons, compartments and modules in the fleet editor reminded me somewhat of fitting dock in Elite Dangerous. You can choose, choose between different modules which will give certain stats and abilities and weapons to your ship but you have to balance it out because of the point system and you have to make it unique to your playstyle. Speaking of uniqueness, you can customize the looks of your faction, meaning the colors, the ship name prefix, something which I value quite highly because all of my ships are GWS, Ground Forks Ship, as well as the ability to put your own logo by placing the 200 by 200, 256 by 256 PNG in the appropriate folder. Great job, devs, love it. So, back to the subject of ships. As I said, the corvette and the frigates are your runners but squishy, while cruisers and battleships are your hard hitters but bulky, slow and inert, making them valuable, val vulnerable to the missiles and dependent on smaller ships for cover. However, they are able to mount heavy weapons that can decimate enemy smaller ships in minutes. The destroyer sits somewhere in the middle with the task of hunting frigates but with the ability to mount a spinal beam weapon with great damage potential making it very dangerous for frigates and capital ships alike. All ships including AI and players depend on the intel provided by sensors and communication from other vessels for tracking and targeting 
And this is where adding electronic warfare into the mix adds a lot to the complexity. So, speaking a little bit now about the weapons. There are several different weapon types in the game. You have your, uh, you have your missiles, of course, and several types of missiles. There are the point-and-click missiles, which require the command ship that launch them to constantly maintain track. There are um, homing missiles, and there are anti... almost like anti-radar missiles. Think about them like, you know, harm projectile, which hones in on the jamming source and actually locks in and swoops in for the kill. Uh, then we have the regular, you know, artillery pieces, which are basically just naval guns, which can feature both armor piercing and high explosive ammo armor piercing is good for taking out you know bulkier heavier targets because well it pierces better armor however if you point them towards smaller ships it will just punch through the different modules not causing the maximum amount of damage yes the punching through has actually been modeled in this game which is one more reason why i think it's amazing so Apart from the naval guns and missiles, you have also the rail guns, which are basically, you know, super fast slugs that can punch through many modules, although cause a little bit, you know, a little less damage weapons, but however, they're being mounted mostly on the more capital ships. Then you have also the, I think, the torpedoes that are sort of slower than missiles, but very hard hitting. And you have also the beam spinal weapons, which is uh, actually a punch through. Think of it like, you know, if you ever played Descent Free Space and stuff. Yes, that's this graphics. It's amazing, guys. So the weapons themselves, they're a great variety, but each of them have their countermeasure. So, for example, if you're tracking a target using a lock uh, for your naval artillery, the target can choose to basically, you know, jam you or behind the asteroid, so you cannot hit it any longer. Uh, if you're sending a lot of missiles towards the target, the target can still jam you with the electronic warfare modules, which can cause the missiles to lose the lock and basically you have wasted a very expensive piece of projectile. Uh, and uh, so the electronic warfare is a game on its own, you have to learn it and if you don't learn it, trust me, you'll become the victim of it. Uh, jamming is also made with signal-to-noise ratio in, you know, in mind, meaning that if you're being jammed, you can maybe just, you know, use the highlighter module. Think of it like, you know, infrared laser pointer that where you put the track on target, which can overpower the jamming. And also, after a while, if the enemy is jamming you constantly, your sensors try to accommodate, meaning there is some drop-off, there is no just, you know, jamming spam. It's really interesting stuff, and there are so many finer details to the game, I cannot go through the, that enough. However, let's talk a little bit through the damage model. Well, there's one major thing in the damage model. There are no health bars. Yes, I will repeat this. No health bars. Every ship is held together by its armor and its components. All armor damage is positional, meaning to hit undamaged areas will fail the full weight of the armor plating. The armor protect protects the soft critical interior components and the ship's crew that will fight frantically to keep the ship operational. Meaning you have damage control teams which will actually physically move from the department to the department indicated by an icon on an, its own minigame and try to keep all of your modules and weapons operational. However, given that there are a lot of interior modules, depending on from which side your projectile or a bullet or anything else or railgun slug comes through, it will damage interior components. And as those components take damage, they will, in some cases, cease to operate. Meaning that you could be, if somebody takes us out of your radar, you could be flying blind. Or, if they take out and uh, set the fire to your crew compartment and rapidly decrease your crew, your ship will be slower to react to commands and, as I said, like in naval action. So, I see a lot of similarities there, but this one has greater depth and I'm really happy to say a lot th more things modeled. And there are different damage types. For example, you could take out the ship's electricity or you could take out the... 
uh, you could take out the crew or you can actually set fire in various compartments causing depressurization which will make your life for your damage crews all the that more demanding so like I said, the, sh the, the battles are tactical, but there's so much to do that you can easily get almost overwhelmed. So, so much about the damage model. When we talked well, uh, about electronic warfare, as I said, sensors are the king here and the intel is the king. Meaning that even the AI, which has been implemented so that it doesn't cheat, it doesn't see your ships, it also relies on the sensors. So, if you get tracked by an enemy, there's also indications in the UI telling you that you're being tracked. You can turn on the jammers, you can go behind an asteroid, you could reduce your radar signature to break a lock. So, this game gives you a lot of different options what to do and how to behave in order to combat this. Each action has its counter, you just have to find it and apply it appropriately. To make your life easier, there is a really in-depth tutorial missions. There sadly isn't yet any campaign, however it's only skirmish and multiplayer battles, but the AI camp the, the tutorials are in-depth and gonna teach you the ropes in terms of what you need to know to manage your ship, get flying and get fighting and get you in a good place. Now when we're talking about the fleet editor, it's a whole component on its own. I mean, this is your bread and butter. This is where you get to craft your lovingly, you know, crafted fleet, not only ships, but fleet, and decide, should I take more lighter ships or should I take more bulky ships and rely on the firepower alone? It all depends on your personal choices and the ability to customize is enormous. It also, I also said it reminds me of Elite Dangerous because when you're fitting out each ship you have to carefully choose. Well, if you choose the stronger radar your cross section will be bigger, you will be easier to spot, but you will also have the chance to relay that information to the remainder of your fleet. So it makes sense to have it for the scout frigates or something like that. Uh, when it comes to bulkier ships, how many point defenses do you want to make? Of course, you will be placing them maybe at the expense of the radars, jamming devices, sensors, so it's all amount of balancing act, and here is where I think the point system is brilliant. The game features like point system as it does, for example, like the Total War games, where you will basically, when choosing your army, you have amount of points, and adding each component at a certain amount of points, so that means that you can actually fit your ship however you want to within a certain amount of points. You can also determine the fleet composition and even the formation. There is also formation mechanics and I have to say uh, the actually getting the ships around takes some getting used to and the tactical view which you have feels like Dreyfus from the Battlestar Galactica. You really get that vibe. It's amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. The multiplayer I have not yet play the multiplayer but I have spectated a couple of matches and I, what I can say it's frenetic when you have multiple players going in on different teams it's just great. Uh, you can have two teams and up to four players per team together with one or two spectators. And the spectating mode for me as a YouTuber is awesome because I could capture some of the, a lot of the great footage that you're actually seeing right now. Uh, okay, so the multiplayer is good done through Steam, you have matchmaking, there are some matches online and I think it's also fun, so do give it a go, And but even if you don't, the AI can present a good enough challenge on its own. Finally, when we come to the graphics and UI, it is a little bit more, you know, cartoony I would almost say, but the ships still feel real and... I don't know, it's hard to find, but I think the graphics and aesthetics works perfect with the game. What I found a little bit distracting is when you click the detail damage model, is actually clicking around and making people go and repair. That takes a little bit distraction from the actual gameplay, however, it is a cool minigame on its own and I can see why it's there. So, but the, even the damage crews do a decent enough job on their own, meaning if you let it on autopilot it won't be a big thing. The UI itself is pretty 
I would say not say intuitive, but it's informative. It tells you at all times what you're doing, what you are, what are your options, what's happening on the interface, and so you're fully informed. And even with highlighting some options, you get a chance to get more information. For example, your gun is not firing. You highlight over the icon, and then you realize it's either out of ammo or it's out of commission, taken out by another shell. Are their teams repairing it? So you're being informed, but that there's so much information that's easily you can easily be overwhelmed. However, when giving commands, it takes some getting used to, as I said before. And I think you should play a couple of you know test missions until you figure it out. There is a sphere tool where you need to go and position yourself in 3D space, which is actually make things a little bit more complex, but it also makes it more fun and engaging. So. Closing thoughts, I mean, if you're a fan of naval battles, space battles, or anything of the sort, like tactical warfare, give this game a look, I cannot recommend it enough, uh, right now it's uh, around six, 17 euro on European Steam page, and it's more than worth its asking price, and given the state it's in, it's only gonna get better. The devs are responsive, they're quick to implement even, you know, these fine tunings and changes that will make our lives easier, and they have a good grasp of, of, on what they have. So, like I said, if you like anything like that, go buy that game. It's that good. With that thing being said, I want to thank you very much for watching this review, especially thanking you to sticking up to the end, and give this game a thumbs up, and if you feel I've done, done a pretty good job of, you know, reviewing the game, Leave a like, it helps me out a great deal. Thank you very much for watching, this is Gromforks, signing off.